I'm going to try to disrupt your assumptions a little bit here this morning. I really want you to remember and take in what I'm about to say to you, because it's very important. It's a hard message and an absolutely crucial message. So I'm going to start with a little bit of disruption. Hi again, everyone. There I am. Here I am. Here you are. And maybe this will make it a little bit easier for you to remember that this isn't just any other talk. This isn't just any other 10 minutes in your life. This is really, really important. And it's partly important, as I've said, because it's hard. Because what I want to say to you is this, that the so-called leaders of this country have failed you, that your teachers, for the best of their intentions, are failing you, that your parents and their generation, again, with the best of their intentions, are failing you, and that so far, I'm failing you. And we're all failing you because you are in a terrible predicament. It's worse than you've been told, almost certainly. Probably a lot worse. Dangerous climate change and the extinction crisis, the crisis of many, many species going extinct as we speak, if they're not stopped, will mean that you do not have normal lives like your parents have. This is about whether you have a future. People probably sometimes ask you, what are you going to be when you grow up? But we've reached a point in human history where the question also has to be asked, what are you going to do if you grow up? I'm really, really sorry to have to say this to you. You know, it doesn't feel good. But this is the truth, and I think it's too late for anything but the truth. And I take inspiration from a young person who I'm privileged to know personally, and who I think is one of the greatest people alive, Greta Thunberg. And what she has said to the leaders of the world is, I don't want you to be calm. I want you to panic. I want you to act like our house is on fire, because it is. You've heard of dangerous climate change. You've heard of the extinction crisis. You've been told probably about sea level rise, the fact that the Arctic and the Antarctic are melting and the seas are gradually rising. But the threat is a lot more immediate than that. Do you remember what happened last summer? We had a terrible heat wave last summer. Yeah? I mean, it was nice for some of the time, right? You could go onto the beach and stuff like that. But it went on and on and it got hotter and hotter. And then what started to happen is our crops started to die. And many crops in this country, their yields were down by about a third. That means there was a third less food coming from them. Now, that heat wave stopped in July. But what if it had gone on into August or September? Well, then the crops would have been down by 50%, 60%. And sooner or later, you reach a point where there just isn't enough food. That's the kind of thing that is likely to happen, very likely to happen, during your lifetimes, unless we manage to address this crisis. Now, the next speaker who you'll hear, I think, has been involved in some of the international climate negotiations to address part of this crisis. And that's absolutely crucial. But you need to understand what's been done so far in terms of the international climate negotiations to try to secure your future is absolutely not enough. The targets are inadequate. And countries do not have plans to meet their targets. And countries have other plans, which will mean they definitely won't meet their targets. For example, you might have heard that there are plans to expand most of the airports in this country. If those plans go ahead, there is just absolutely no way we can meet our targets under the international climate agreements. And if we don't meet those targets, then our weather is going to carry on spinning out of control. And we're going to have more heat waves, and they're going to be worse, and that's going to go on and on. 
Henry mentioned that we have a target in this country now to go carbon net zero by 2050. That means no carbon emissions in this country in 31 years' time. And that's an ambitious target compared to many countries. But as Henry said, it's not ambitious enough. Why is it not ambitious enough? Because if that's our target, then what that means is we're going to make this situation worse for the next 31 years. We're going to not stop making this situation worse till people like you are provided you get there in your 40s and 50s. That's just not good enough. Now, I know that some adults in the room will be feeling uncomfortable with what I'm saying. They'll be thinking, children shouldn't have to hear this. They'll be thinking, you ought to be giving the children hope, not imparting fear into them. But remember what Greta Thunberg said. We have to change everything. We have to disrupt our normal assumptions. If we carry on as we are doing, then you're not going to have the kind of future that you've been led to believe that you will have. It really is as simple as that. So what I want to do is I want to give you hope, but I want to give you real hope. What I want to say is don't hope for a future where everything is going to be the same as it is at the moment, because that's not going to happen. The situation vis-a-vis -vis climate and vis-a-vis -vis nature is going to get worse for a long time to come. Much of your life is going to be about it getting worse. And the question is, can we rise to the challenge, and can you rise to the challenge of stopping it from getting worse and starting to make it better? And that is a very, very huge challenge. It's bigger and more difficult than anything the human race has ever done. And until recently, there was very little hope that we would do it, that we would rise to that challenge. Two things have happened to change that situation. One is, as has already been mentioned, the climate school strikes initiated by Greta Thunberg. And that has really changed the debate because adults are, I think, frankly, ashamed of the fact that children have had to go on strike in order to, in order to draw attention to how desperate this situation is. And I think it's absolutely fantastic that children have done that. And I think it's terrible that children have had to do that. But that is the situation we are in. And if children carry on doing that, then there is a chance that this consciousness will grow and change and that we will start to step up to the plate and do enough. The other new thing that has happened is that some adults, too, have stepped up to the plate and started to really do enough. You may have heard of what happened in April here in London. It was called Extinction Rebellion. And I was one of these rebels. I was one of these people who blocked roads in London, who sat on Waterloo Bridge for two weeks, sat in Parliament Square, and said, we are doing this, we are breaking the law, because unless everything changes, and really fast, there isn't going to be a future. We're on the path to the collapse of our civilization, to there not being enough food on the table, to not having a future, and that is unacceptable. And we did that, and at first everybody said, this is terrible, you can't sit down in the road, you can't block traffic, etc." And after a couple of weeks, everybody said, you know what, they've got a point. And the British public started to change its mind, and now you have a majority of the British public saying, yes, there is a climate emergency. Yes, I would vote for a different party in order to address that emergency. Yes, the government should drastically change its policies to address that emergency. So you may have noticed something in common between those two things. Children have been breaking the rules and saying, sometimes we're not going to go to school in protest against a situation where we may not have a future. Why should we go to school if we're being taught to grow up in a future which may not exist? And some adults have said, yes, we're not going to go on obeying the law when the law is committing us to a future which is going to be no future for our children. The situation is now sufficiently desperate that it's not enough anymore to vote the right way. It's not enough anymore to have really great projects in your school. We need to seriously think about which rules we're going to break to draw attention to the crisis. So I was asked when I came here this morning, tell the truth, Rupert. 
but you mustn't encourage students to break the law. So I'm not going to encourage you to break the law. I'm simply going to draw attention to the fact that sometimes when you do something disruptive, you can get people's attention. And that what school children around the world have been doing is changing the world. And that what Extinction Rebellion is doing is changing public consciousness and changing the world. And it's that that gives me hope now at this awesome moment in human history. And the fact that you are here this morning gives me hope. And if you hear an adult say to you, look, I don't want to make you scared. I want to give you hope that you're going to have a decent future. So let me tell you how the future is all going to be fine. Well, you know, maybe they're very well intentioned and maybe they're right. And maybe everything is going to be OK. But I tell you this, things are not going to be OK unless we look reality in the eye, unless we are honest about the situation, unless we have hope for what we can actually have hope for, unless we actually act radically. And I warn you that the reason why some adults don't want to tell you the truth about how thing, bad things are is because they feel ashamed or because they feel guilty. And that's understandable, but it's not a good enough reason for not being straight with you. So that's what I've tried to do in this last 10 minutes. If it has disturbed you, if you feel angry, if you feel upset, you have a right to feel angry. You have a right to feel upset. But I don't have a right to be silent. From the older generation, I don't have a right to be silent about the real situation that we are in and the crises that are going to define your lives. I hope that you are going to throw yourselves into dealing with those crises. And I hope that that will mean that we can all hope together for further down the line, a better future. Thank you so much for your attention and for your courage. And I wish you everything. Thank you.